All right, it says it's streaming. There's a little green light down there. It's me and Uncle Phil. If anyone's tuning in, here we are, puzzling out the problem. Yeah, <laughs> if it is. Video. Yeah. And then what I was doing, because it wasn't seeming to work, I, was, I had this open, and then I go to YouTube on this. Oh, so you can, that's your monitor that you're trying to... Well, what I was doing is going to create in YouTube and record it. Wait, is that it? This is it. But then my phone oh. ran but then my phone ran out of juice. Oh. Well that's good. I found it now at least. I'm not sure. I think it cut off cartway through, but I that's a good <laughs> step in the right direction. Yeah, there's my lesson. Okay. Oh that looks great. Do you have a, a, a simulated background? No, it's just this. Oh. Okay. It's just the no, you probably can't see it. Oh, okay, that's the, the light part is the wall. Okay, wow. Well, yeah. probably, <laughs> probably would be better at landscape, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, that looks great. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, so there we go. I'm glad you sat here and listened to me puzzle over it, because now at least I know this only lasted 12 minutes, apparently, though. So. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so you have to... Okay, title. Okay, here we go. Well, I'm going <laughs> to put this up because I just feel so, at least I got part of it up. Yeah. So, hey, um, Koa, just uh, yeah. if you could, uh, you know, maybe rethink this packet just with the thought of, you know, every month, two weeks, or however long, you know, to replenish. Because mm -hmm. she, the mom, Stephanie, expressed gratitude that she could have some support because she's overwhelmed. Yeah. And so just putting yourself in her shoes and what, what would be a plan for the for Koa to mm -hmm. start learning the letters and, mm -hmm. you know, the numbers and mm -hmm. whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if she'll this. have, I wonder if she will have access to this. No, no not at any point. Okay. So it's a complete home. Okay. Which, you know, I figured we're here to serve our families. And this is a bona fide, she's an hour away. Yeah. She can't drive, yeah. you know to have the school access. Mm -hmm. um, is she, um, is, do, they, do they have, a, they don't have a landline at all, right? I don't know what their phone situation is. I know you spoke to her on the phone. Right? Yeah, just now. So was she home? She yeah, she's home. Okay, so, but was that, how was the connection? Was that okay? Seemed fine. Okay, so at least I can call. Yeah, she said call. Okay. Yeah. And I'd have, I've she's been in, in touch with. She's waiting, she, she'll, look, she'll look for your call. Okay. Today. I mean, I texted her yesterday, a pretty long text, saying, "Oh, I mean, I really hope that we can help you guys. All I'm going to do is hear from you yep. in the morning, and yep. you know, whatever works for you guys is going to work for me." Yep. I, you know, I, um, but she came in. I met her in Koa the day that she was in with King to meet okay. Angelina, but I wasn't an official. It was just that we had the first part meet and greet, but we weren't ready to pass out stuff, nor did we do the assessment. So anyway, she can come back. Oh, yeah. yeah. So she, yeah, that would be good uh, to have her, to have them be assessed at some point. Yeah. So, you know. They got to come to town every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's worked out too. Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. I'm leaving it in your hands then. Okay.
It's working right now? Yep. It's live streaming? It like this? Like this? Go check it out. I'll stand in front of the computer. I don't know what I'm doing. You want to bring your cell phone or do you need that for this process? I don't know. I just want it plugged in because I got to try it. I just wish I understood what was going on. So clearly the computer is live streaming right now. To me it seemed like until this moment, it seemed like the only thing that was actually working was the phone. Like I recorded my my lesson, the first 12 minutes, I recorded on my phone, but I was low on power, it cut off. Yep. So I have that first 12 minutes, which is I'm kind of happy for, but I have to do the whole thing again now though. Okay. Go check it out and I'll start talking. Welcome, Jamie, to Mr. Fredlin's neighborhood. I'm here in the first grade classroom, mm -hmm. and I've got my green mask. Mm -hmm. But there's nobody in here right now, so I'm going to take it off. I hope that you can hear me, even though the speaker in the office is not very loud. You did it. I will keep talking so you can determine whether or not the audio is what you want it to be. And yeah. Testing, testing. It appears that there's a little bit of a lag. streamed all over the world. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to set this up and try again. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm going to be a star by morning then. Oh. And we should try that Lisa was like, we can hear everything you're saying in the classroom. Just hear it where? Who said that? Lisa? Oh.
I'm hesitant to turn it off. I'm so afraid to turn it off. Okay. So weird. So this, it's actually about a five second delay, it looks like, because yeah. and the question is, if I press record, will it also record? And do I need to use my phone to record? It seems like it's working now. Sorry, you have to hear all this, all you folks out in TV land, like Pierre. You think you're the only one watching, Pierre? Thank you for being such a dedicated fan. <laughs> Uh, I don't know whether to. Um, so I just shared, if I go like this, I just shared um, two documents with you that. Mm -hmm. Monica shared with me, yeah. and they seem like they're, well, if you could just take a look at what I just emailed, I think it came as an email. Good, because then you go in and like, hard yeah, so then take a look at, I think, I didn't look at it real carefully, but it um, it's basically looks like two different documents, looks like there's like a one, number one and number two, um, that, um, you know, like the one to start with and the one to do after you've done the first one. Um, to for kids it's like a workbook but they I think what they do is they cut out all these pictures and they sort them into different envelopes like does this thing start with a B or start with a C or start with a D or what it starts with so it's a it's a good phonics workbook when kids you know when kids aren't ready for that workbook one right. um, so if you could take a look at those yeah. get your head around it yeah. um, if there's any to me, what I think it is is we print out multiple copies for you know a, a, a copy for each kid, yeah. um, and you know maybe don't do the ones of the kids. Maybe maybe the beginning one would be appropriate for most of the kids, and the second one will be appropriate for um, some of the kids. And then like as there's like more, as the kids more advanced. right, and there's like one kid that we have already that's like this is the right thing for her oh. probably right because nobody else was on the level of um, the one the one girl who. Really knows how to read. Uh, they yeah. Correct. So everybody, everybody else would be getting one of those two, or both of them, or whatever. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot of copying. It has to be single sided because it's a cutting out thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So yeah. that's that's our next project. All right. And then we'll get those in the hands of kids somehow or another. Okay. Um, and you're still live, right? I'm still live. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Ah, when you're not alive. Okay. <laughs> Be careful what you say. It's live TV. <laughs> I think I'm just going to start right now. Will you put the recording sign out front? Yes. Thanks.
Uh, thank you if you've tuned in. I can't tell. Let's see, warning, what's going on? Please check the video resolution. Okay. Um, seems like I'm live right now. Just trying to alert everybody as to the um, fact that I am now finally present here. I started a whole um, lesson this morning and I thought it went pretty well actually. I don't think anyone saw it though. I did, I think I was able to post the first 12 minutes if you're listening, uh, anybody out there in TV land. Um, I was able to post the first 12 minutes and 49 seconds. Um, so I'm going to just try to do that again. Um, I would say probably don't watch that one once I get this one's, once I get this one um, alive and kicking, then um, start again. Just redo that one. Now I know how those teachers feel who teach, you know, the same class two, three times in a row. They have like a bunch of students and they, they teach a lesson and then they, and they teach it again and then they teach it again and then they teach it again three, four times in a row. Um, so I feel like the video is really not that good. I feel like you can hear my voice fine, but you get these little snippets of video. Don't know why that is. And I will um, call my, my tech team in. Tech team? Tech team. Oh, I, don't, I guess I don't have a tech team. That's the problem here. No tech team. It's a sad day in the world when there's no tech team to help out a poor guy who's trying to... And I'm not a boomer. My kids will be like, all right, fine, boomer, which I think is actually kind of rude, but, you know, whatever. All right, pretty soon I'm going to embarrass myself trying to fill up time and say something stupid if I haven't already done that. dun da -da, dun da -da. Okay, I'm getting the message that I am getting through. Thank you for that. How's the video quality? Anybody want to text me and say, yeah, the video quality is really laggy or it's perfectly awesome? All right, that's about enough, I guess. No lag, thank you very much. Okay, I see a few more people are watching. No lag on the video. It's making me pretty happy. I think my problem earlier is that my phone died and that was what was recording the lesson. So. Yeah, I see several people in attendance. Thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna rewind my brain and my lesson. Unplug my phone. Now the question is, will it record on this? Or do I have to have this one going at the same time? Um, just for safety, I'm gonna have this one going at the same time, my little trusty phone here. And I'm gonna organize myself one more time to erase the board because that was the lesson earlier. Balance that up there. Okay. So this is the moment when you're all, people are just filtering into classroom. Hello, good morning, good morning. I'm so glad you're here. I'll be ready in a minute to do some real teaching again. And uh, then we will all start fresh. This is from the previous lesson. We'll just get rid of this.
you know, take two is always an option, right? Take two is always an option, because I realized partway through take one that I was going to need to have my whole body visible for one thing, so I'll just back this up a little bit, see what that does. This feels like it's in the way now. So this is kind of how a live stream goes, I guess. When I come up close, I gotta stand back here. All right. And what if I come back here? Still can't see the rest of me, but that's okay. All right. Start fresh here. All right, welcome to first grade. This is the first day of first grade, um, two weeks late. So here we are, starting fresh, and welcome to first grade. Uh, to adjust myself to looking at myself on the screen rather than looking at all the smiling faces around the classroom, but I'll just imagine all your smiling faces um, or frowning faces sometimes, depending on how you're feeling uh, from from your various places where you live. And we will set up a Zoom meeting at some point so that we can actually see each other live and in person. Well, you know, we're pretty close. So, um, but for now I'm gonna tape these lessons and we'll just go right in. So, welcome so much to the first day of first grade. Uh, I want to mention firstly, Koto is one of our class members. I think probably all of you know her already. Um, but Koto turned seven. Uh, that we're supposed to have the first day of first grade and now here we are two weeks in and she's now seven years old and two weeks unless i've got it wrong by one week so happy birthday koto um the the very next thing i like to do in the morning is is call attendance and in, in school we call attendance like this at, at, in my classroom i say i sing it First grade, are you here? And your response is, yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Will you try it with me? First grade, are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Good morning, first grade. So glad that you are all here. It is just lovely to be your teacher. I feel so lucky. And I hope we have a great day. We start out the day with the morning verse. And the morning verse is just one way to greet the day. You know, people have been greeting the day, sun, the sunrise and the sunshine since the beginning of human beings. Since ancient, ancient times, people have honored the sun with their new day. And I have a book all about that that I'd love to share with you sometime. But for now, I'll just say the morning verse. And when you start understanding how it goes, then you say it with me. So, but today you'll hear it for the first time, probably. And I just go like this. I raise my arms up to greet the sun in the sky and say, The sun, with loving light, makes bright for me each day. The soul, with spirit power, gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I, with all my might, may love to work and learn. From thee come light and love. To thee rise love and thanks. So here we are, starting the day off right with the morning verse. The next thing I like to do is something a little bit uh, kind of fun where we it's called the body geography song and I can sing it in English and I can sing part of it in Hawaiian for now and then we'll build on to it later so you probably know this one's called head shoulders knees and toes so when I say head you touch your head ready you can stand up for this I think that would be more fun than sitting there listening to it without doing anything so here we go head shoulders knees and toes knees and toes Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and
and toes, knees and toes. Let's do it again. Head, shoulders, knees, oops. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Kind of changed the melody that time, didn't I, a little bit? Okay, in Hawaiian it goes like this. Po o po o hi vi kuli va vai. Po o po o hi vi kuli va vai. Po o po o hi vi kuli va vai. He malama kokino. So I'll do that again. Learned that from Uncle Tony five, six years ago. Po o po o hi vi kuli va vai. Po o po o hi vi kuli va vai. Po o po o hi vi kuli va vai. Hey, malama kokino. And there's more of that, and I can't wait to relearn it and teach it to you. Please sing along when you, once you know it. Now I'm going to say a poem, which is also kind of funny, and it's about a crooked, a lot of crooked stuff. So it goes like this. Well, first we get the rhythm with our hands. Ready, go. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat who caught a crooked mouse, and they all lived together in a very crooked house. So you might be wondering what a sixpence is and what a style is, and I'll tell you. A sixpence is a kind of a coin from a faraway place, and a style is an old-fashioned word for a certain kind of fence. Can you imagine a crooked cat? And what does a crooked mouse look like? Here we go. We'll say it two more times, right through. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat who caught a crooked mouse, and they all lived together in a very crooked house. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat who caught a crooked mouse, and they all lived together in a very crooked house. I love that one. Um, the next thing we're going to do is to count to 100. A lot of you already know how to count to 10, and many of you know how to count to 20, and some of you know how to keep on going and going and going. And many of you make a few mistakes on the way up, here and there. So we'll count to 100 together. I will start it, and you will join in, I hope. And then we'll get used to counting by it to 100, and then I'll give a challenge to those of you who already know how to count to 100 to continue on up. And later we'll learn all kinds of different ways of counting to 100 and counting backwards and all kinds of stuff. So here we go. It starts with counting to 100 though, doesn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's just keep going. I have another game to play in a minute. What comes after 10? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 
57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. There we go. Challenge problem. You can just start right over again and count to 200 by just putting the word 100 in front of each number. So you would say 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, and just keep on going. And when you get to 199, you say 200. And you can keep on going after that, of course, which is kind of fun. But it gets really tiring counting to 1,000 like that, so we'll turn into, we'll, we'll make a shorter way of counting to 1,000 someday by counting by 10s or 5s and different things like that. All right. So uh, the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to ask you about the assignment that I gave some of you. And when uh, the rest of you come into school, I will give you the assignment and the paper and the crayons that you need. So the assignment is to draw a picture in your first page of your main lesson book, a picture of three things, a person, a house, and a tree. You can put anything else in the drawing that you want, but be sure to include a person, a house, and a tree. See if you can do it with no reminders. If you get confused, you can ask your caregiver, what was I supposed to draw again? But caregivers, don't remind them without being asked. Just let them do whatever they do. So again, Anything else in the drawing you want, but at least a person, a house, and a tree. And that stays in your main lesson book. And anything else that goes in your main lesson book, the only things that go in your main lesson book are things that I tell you as your teacher to put in your main lesson book. But your other notebooks and drawing books that you might have around the house, uh, those, of course, you can draw whatever you want. And I hope you do. I hope you draw every single day. Um, or paint, or make a sculpture, or do something every day. Those are the, what they call the fine arts. And there's the performing arts. I hope you also every day sing or dance or play some music or um, anything like that as well because it's just fun. The other assignment that the whole school got was a writing assignment to write about something that you did last summer. And what I want you to do is draw a picture of something you did last summer. It could be just actually what I, what I said before was think of something that you know a lot about or something you remember really well and draw a picture of it and then write about it even if you don't know all your letters you can just make it up guess pretend or get some help even it'd be more fun if you can do it on your own because that's that's great but if it feels too hard then you can ask for help yeah, I think you can make it up. Just like I gave the example when the children were here in the classroom, they, when they visited, I said, you know, I don't know how to write Chinese, but I kind of know what Chinese writing looks like, so I could kind of just pretend I know how to write Chinese, and I could draw my picture of what I did last summer on the blackboard, and then I could write in some other language that I don't really know, and just tell you that that's what I think it says, is I like to take care of my dog and play with my dog, I love to feed my dog, and his name is Hoku, or whatever your dog's name is. Um, so obviously your drawing does not have to be of a dog. That's getting a little confusing now. So the writing assignment is to draw a picture on a blank piece of paper of anything that you know a lot about, and, um, and then uh, write about it in whatever way you like. All right. The first day of first grade, we always do a lesson on the board, and it's called the straight line and the curve. And if you look around the world, you'll see that everything all around the world that you can see 
is made up of straight lines and curves. Like right behind me here, I've got a straight line right here. I have, do you see some other straight lines? Maybe down this way. I've also got a curve. I've got this is just gently curved, this is gently curved, this is for sure a curve. And when you look at leaves and grass and trees and flowers, you all see lots and lots of curves and some straight lines too. So if you can draw a good straight line, control a line really well, curve a straight, a curved line really, really perfectly or nicely um, or precisely, then you can draw anything in the whole world. So we're gonna start with that. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna take my chalk and I'm gonna face my board here. I'm gonna get just the right distance away from it. I'm not gonna go too fast, but I'm also not going to go too slow. I have to do just right, like Goldilocks, just right. That helps me draw the, the most straight line I can. So here we go, wish me luck. It's not easy to draw a perfectly straight line, even though it seems like it might be. All right, I'm gonna concentrate, here I go. That's pretty straight, I'd say. A tiny bit crooked. You can tell a machine didn't make it. You can tell I made it. And I'm human, I'm not a machine. So it's not gonna be exact, is it? But I'm gonna try to make another one. This is even harder now. I'm gonna try to make another one just like it. Pretty close. Pretty close. I think the second one's actually even a little straighter. I think that one, this first one leans just a tiny bit that way. Now, but even trickier, I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna try to make it the same distance apart. You can try this later, okay? This is, I think it's better just to watch now, unless you've already started, I don't really mind. But um, I'm gonna make a third one now. I'm gonna try to make it the same distance that I made those two. So I'm gonna just guess it's about right there. I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna say, okay, here we go. The same length, the same distance away and as straight as I can manage. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Good enough. My best effort. Here we go. Okay, there. That one, yeah, that one worked out pretty well too. Now, this part's even harder. I'm going to bring this a little closer. All right. So a curve is a little harder to control. I'm never quite happy with the curve I, every time I do it. It's a little flat over here. I think it curves a little more down here than it does over there, but it's pretty close. It's good enough. Now, the hard part is drawing another one. So here we go. I'm trying to make the same kind of curve, start in the same place, go the same. Never satisfied, <laughs> that's okay. I'm gonna keep trying, because it's okay. Good enough. It's amazing how hard it is to do something that sounds so easy. It's hard to do it just right. Oh, and I look at that, I can see that this one is way curvier than that one. With my last one, I'm gonna to try to fix it. I'm trying to make it closer to this one. See how this one doesn't curve nearly as much? This one goes right, right, right around. Here we go. That's closer to the first one. I kind of like that one the best, I think. Well, so here's an assignment for you. Try to draw, how about 10 straight lines and 10 curved lines on a piece of paper with no lines on it, and just as a practice, not in the main lesson book, on some other piece of paper. Draw them nice and, you know, 
draw them bigger than you, don't draw little tiny ones, draw you know, pretty decent sized ones that take up most of a page. Not the entire page, you know, start somewhere a little bit down and end your line before the bottom of the page. So a straight line and a curve practice. And we'll get much more complicated as the weeks go on with our practice with controlling uh, lines on the paper. Okay, so the last thing I have for you today is a story. And this is a story that goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a girl. She was just a young little girl and she was very, very poor. Not only did she have no money, but she did not even have a family. She lived by herself. And when things got even worse, she finally did not even have a place to live anymore. And so she just walked away from the town where she lived, where everyone was very poor. But she was about the poorest one, having no family to take care of her and no food and no money. So she didn't know what else to do with herself, and so she just walked away. She left. And she walked away from the town, and it was winter. It was cold. And someone had given her a piece of bread because they had felt sorry for her and saw that she was in need of food. So she had her little piece of bread, and she was walking away from the town, and she came across an old man who was crying out and begging for, for food because he also was very hungry. And although she was hungry herself, she felt sorry for the old man and she gave him her bread. And he thanked her. And she kept on walking. And although she was cold and hungry and didn't know where to go, she was not sad. She felt comfortable. She felt at home in the world. And she could see the beauty all around her of the trees and the forest as she came closer to the forest. And she also had a, a warmth in her heart. She felt nice that she had given the food to the old man who needed it. And she didn't mind that she was hungry because it felt so good to help someone who needed help. Well, she walked along and walked along and sh soon she found, saw a girl who was without a jacket. And she was shivering from cold and she asked the other girl if she had any extra clothes that she could have because she was so cold. And the girl took off her hood and shawl, cloak, and gave it to the little girl who thanked her. And now the little girl was colder than before, but she kept on walking and she still felt so happy. She smiled to herself thinking, wow, I feel so nice to give something to someone else who needs it. And she walked along a little further and sure enough, she saw another little child who was crying from the cold. She right away took off her jacket and wrapped it around the little boy who was huddled up against a tree trunk trying to pull leaves next to him to warm himself. And then she walked on and finally she saw another little girl. And this little girl did not have hardly any clothes on, only some rags that she was still wearing. Her clothes were all tattered and torn. And the little girl took off her dress. It was nighttime, it was dark, there was nobody around. She was alone. And she took off her dress and gave it to the little girl. And then just walked along into the forest by herself. And she was cold, but it was so beautiful. The trees were beautiful. And she looked up at the branches of the trees and it was nighttime now. And the branches were dark against the sky. And she looked up and she saw all those branches and she saw beyond the branches to the stars. And she looked up and she had never seen such bright stars. The stars, the whole sky seemed to be alive with twinkling stars, just full of the brightest stars she'd ever seen in her life. 
And it gave her such a feeling of just love and gratitude. She just looked up, wow, so beautiful. The stars seemed to be speaking almost as they twinkled. And then the strangest thing happened, a miracle. Some of the stars seemed to be falling slowly toward her, twinkling and falling down to her. She looked up with wide eyes and a bright smile and saw them and reached out to catch the stars as they landed close and tiny all into her arms. And she looked down and what did she see? But all the stars had transformed into gold and silver coins. Her arms were full. She opened up her undershirt and put the gold coins in her shirt and as many as she could carry, she could bring back. And she walked back to the town and she was never cold, and never hungry again and lived happily to the end of her days, always watching out for and caring for others who needed some help. So it was, and so it is, and so it shall be. Thank you for being here today for this main lesson. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully with all the technology glitches figured out, and um, I'll see you tomorrow at 9.